So let's talk space marine dreadnoughts and perhaps the biggest and scariest of the lot right now. What can the brutal redemptor dreadnought do in 10th edition? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking space marines, and in specific we're focusing on the redemptor dreadnought, the mighty adamantium walking sargophagus, redesigned for the Primaris era. Perhaps one of the most iconic models of the new Primaris range, and quite a fun stompy powerhouse on the board. In this video we'll talk through its rules, its range of melee damage output and roughly what you can expect out of this thing, and any boosts and synergies that you could use with it in game. The Redemptor Dreadnought model I think was really quite well received by fans, a big and dangerous Primaris Dreadnought, a lot bigger and chunkier than the older boxy Dreadnought that it kinda was the spiritual successor to, armed with a classic Dreadnought fist, and then on the other hand either a Gatling Cannon or an enormous Plasma Gun, loads to like about both of those. The Redemptor Dreadnought can house a fallen Space Marine hero, shattered body unable to continue the fight but is able to direct a Dreadnought sarcophagus, though such is the massive power of the Redemptor's frame that it slowly kills its host, a fallen Space Marine hero literally giving everything to continue the fight against the enemies of mankind. Currently the kit from Games Workshop is kind of similar to a lot of their other slightly bigger vehicle kits, it's £45, €60 Euros or $75, Though if you were looking to land one of these at a discount, you could potentially pick up the Dark Angels Combat Patrol set. There is an overall discount on that one, packaged alongside some Inceptors, Intercessors and a Chaplain. Even just for the basic kit though, it's maybe not terrible value as Space Marines and Warhammer goes in general. They're quite expensive in game at the moment, and 3 points per dollar really isn't too bad as far as Warhammer goes, a reasonable chunk of points towards an army. I do quite like the Redemptor model, looks maybe a little bit more practical and dangerous as opposed to the stompy older Dreadnoughts, though they did certainly have their charm, and it comes with a fair amount of weapon options as well and posability, plasma or heavy onslaught Gatling cannon in the right arm, flamer or onslaught in the left, and then the choice of different storm bolters or frag storm grenade launchers on the chest guns is at least fairly poseable as well, and it is possible to magnetise out the heavy onslaught versus the macro plasma should you wish to. If you were looking to pick up one of these, Element Games has them in the UK for just over £38, around 15% off the standard price, Gap Games in Australia have them for 21% off, I'll leave both of those links down in the video description, anyone buying through any of the affiliate links down below doesn't pay any more, but it does help to support all specs tactics a little bit. On to the rules though, and here's the datasheet for the Redemptor Dreadnought in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. 225 points worth of armoured might, it's really quite a lot more expensive compared with 9th edition, going over cool 40 points, but does still seem to be pretty worth it for the cost. Stats wise it moves 8 inches, a little bit more threatening towards actually getting its melee where you actually want it to be, and I feel like a few of the other dreadnoughts and hellbrutes of the Chaos Space Marines tend to suffer a bit from moving 6 inches and not being able to reliably catch up with their foe if they want to move away from them. Otherwise it's got objective control 4, which isn't a bad thing to have on midfield points if you put it there. A bit more threat than most vehicles, they won't be holding points against troops and the like, and it's both got the vehicle and the walker keywords, meaning that it can heroically intervene if needed, and it can tank shock when it charges into combat, which can be a good idea against some targets. Perhaps one of the more obvious things about the Redemptor Dreadnought is its durability. Its stats increased to a toughness 10 and a 2 plus save since 9th edition, both of which are very nice improvements, the toughness 10 being fairly equivalent with a new damage chart compared with where it was in 9th I think, but it will be a bit more resilient against small arms like heavy bolters which now wound it on 6s. It's got 12 wounds and duty eternal, duty eternal making it one of the only dreadnoughts that kept the minus 1 damage rule from 9th edition, minus 1 damage is very nice against things like damage 2 plasma weapons or flat damage 3 guns, but is a lot less use against anything that's dedicated anti-tank, with either d6 damage or d6 plus 1 or the like, it's going to be a rule that's far better at keeping it safe from medium strength guns as opposed to the heaviest anti-tank around. Just for a comparison against a couple of lightly competitors, here's the Redemptor Dreadnought's durability stacked up against a Repulsor Executioner, an Armager Warglaive and a Gladiator Lancer, this table weighted for how many hits on the target that you need to kill 100 points worth of the unit. Out of these sort of things for dangerous space marine units and one other generally efficient walker elsewhere, the Redemptor Dreadnought comes up top against the Heavy Bolter, Plasma Gun and Auto Cannon, two damage 2 weapons and a damage 3 weapon. It really is quite significantly ahead against the Heavy Bolter, though in general that's not going to be the biggest thing to most vehicles for the most part anyway. Otherwise it's just not really quite a standout against a missile launcher with strength 10, AP 2 and damage D6, 
After these targets, the repulsor executioner is the winner there, as that's the only one that's wounded on a 5+. plus. But against more serious anti-tank like last cannons, the Redemptor Dreadnought might fall down a little bit. It's a little bit less tougher point for point than the Repulsor Executioner or the Armager Warglaive here, but not by loads. Overall, I generally rate it as extra good against medium strength firepower, and about the same as other vehicles for higher strength firepower. Other than the things on this table, I bear in mind that it's usually quite easy to get cover saves in 10th edition, and the 2 plus cover save from the Redemptor Dreadnought would really quite like that. It would allow the Dreadnought to catch up a little bit against the Missile Launcher and Last Cannon compared with the other units if it got cover. On the flip side though, reliance on a higher save and the minus 1 damage rule could mean that it's a bit more susceptible to things like Melter Weapons or Mortal Wounds than most of the things on this list. Anything with excessively high AP or doesn't care about the minus 1 damage rule at all is going to cause it a few more problems than most. In general though, I think its durability is really quite solid. Moving on to its ranged weapons, I feel like the choice between the Macroplasma and Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon is a fairly solid win in favour of the Macroplasma. The Heavy Onslaught can kill a bunch of infantry, the Mortal Wounds are useful enough if you've got Oath of Moment on the targets to fish for more sixes, but the Macroplasma threatens vehicles far more and is far more dangerous against heavy infantry like Terminators or medium infantry like Space Marines, and it might not even be quite as far behind against the Hordes as you might expect, as it does get the Blast keyword so it could get a few more shots there. I think particularly as the other guns are a bit more skewed towards killing infantry, it just doesn't really need all that much more of the same. The Macroplasma makes it a far more all-round threat, as opposed to a dedicated infantry killer. For the gun on the side of the fist, you've got the choice between the Heavy Flamer or the Onslaught Gatling Cannon. After those two, I think that the Onslaught Gatling Cannon is far superior. It gets 8 shots with devastating wounds, and isn't actually all that far behind the Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon. The only difference is 4 shots and 1 pip of strength. You don't get any extra AP or range or anything. Then you get the Icarus pod for free now, D3, shots at strength 8, AP 1 and damage 2. And between the two chest guns you either get a twin linked set of storm bolters or twin linked frag storm grenade launcher. I think I'd probably be more tempted by the storm bolters out of the two there. I think they are fairly well balanced. Against the right target the frag storm could be a bit better due to the blast keywords. Does mean that you couldn't fire them directly into combat though I suppose. I do think that the Macroplasma Incinerator is really quite standout right now and quite good for the 40k meta in general. D6 plus 1 shots, so an average of 4, 5, turn on turn. Strength 9 and AP minus 4 and damage 3 if you overcharge, but you don't have to if it's not going to make too much difference against your targets. I think the high AP is particularly nice in 10th edition, where you might well have a lot of units with very high saves. For the range damage, here's just a very rough idea of what you might expect out of a Macroplasma Dreadnought, with the Onslaught Gatling Cannon, Storm Bolters and Icarus, all firing at 24 inches. Overall I think it's a fairly general purpose dreadnought, you'd expect to kill around about 7 or so termagants, around about 4 space marines with the macroplasma doing most of the work there, 1 or 2 space marine terminators, around about 6 wounds to a rhino tank, or around about 3 or 4 to a land raider. Overall pretty solid work there, usually around about 60 points worth of models shot dead, and it cares surprisingly little about what it's targeting. Those are just the numbers for ploughing all the firepower into one target though, you could certainly divide fire and put the macroplasma into something that it's good against, and the anti-infantry shots into some lighter targets. And when you're firing, I would bear in mind the order that you fire the weapons in, you've got a choice of different damage profiles that might well be able to plink the last wound from one whole infantry unit before you go on to fry some whole models with the macroplasma for example. You'd also have the decision as to whether or not you're overcharged. I think it's usually going to be worth it if the damage characteristic is going to make a difference or not. Going from strength 8 to strength 9 isn't quite as significant as it used to be though, though if something is either toughness 8 or toughness 9 then it's definitely worth it. Then in combat the Redemptor Dreadnought also hits with its Redemptor Fist. 5 big hits with strength 12, AP minus 2 and damage 3. I feel like overall in general it still definitely has a lot more of a ranged threat compared with a melee threat. In combat I think it's going to be better against anything that's medium infantry or tougher. The attacks do feel kind of wasted against things like a horde unit like Termagants, where you're not going to kill that many of them. For most units you'd usually expect more for range damage than melee, though if you are charging in and you just want a big burst of damage, the tank shock stratagem is kind of nice. 1 CP for usually going to be throwing 13 dice at the enemy target, and every roll of a 5 plus deals a mortal wound. That kind of damage is often going to outpace its regular damage against the vast majority of targets, so it could be worth it if you really need to make sure a squad gets wiped out. Overall I still rate the Redemptor Dreadnought as a pretty solid generalist, fairly good both range and combat threats, and fairly tough for its cost as well with the minus 1 damage, even more so if it gets a bit of cover. 
We're getting a bit more out of it. There's certainly plenty of buffs available from the Space Marine Army. Oh, some moment kind of speaks for itself on just about any unit, but I think again it's particularly nice for this guy. Lots of general purpose shots at a variety of strengths is usually going to have big use for this. Often a few of its guns might be wounding on fives against high toughness targets, like the Macroplasma against big vehicles and things, and that could have a pretty spectacular increase in damage output there. The Onslaught Gatling Cannons would certainly enjoy fishing for devastating wounds as well. Otherwise, in the Gladius Detachment, I think it's got potential use for the Devastator Tactical and Assault Doctrine. Perhaps the Devastator seems like one of the most helpful for the Redemptor. It can advance up the board and get in range or line of sight with its 24-inch range guns, and also have itself make its way towards combat as well to be effective with that fist as well. Tactical could be handy enough once you are engaged. It could certainly use falling back, shooting and charging, and maybe even tank shocking when it does so. And overall, perhaps the Assault Doctrine might be the most niche, I guess you could use it if you desperately need a really long charge, but it might not be quite as nice to sacrifice all that shooting. Being a big tanky unit for 225 points, I think it is a pretty reasonable choice to pile stratagems onto, though you won't be getting any free ones with captains or things. Otherwise, from the Gladius, you could use Honor the Chapter for a plus one to wound with its fist, though I think that in general, tank shock's usually going to be the superior choice. Storm of Fire could get you an extra pip of AP against something with very high saves. I think there's probably going to be better units to use that on most of the time though, but if you absolutely needed all the damage output, could be okay. You only get the AP minus one if you're in Devastator Doctrine, but you ignore cover as well, just normally. And for one command point, Armor of Contempt I think is pretty excellent with a 2 plus armor save. Particularly if it's just about to take a whole bunch of AP1 or AP2 fire, you could get it saving on a very high number, and even more so if you're in cover. As mentioned, Tank Shock is pretty excellent value, usually around about 4 or 5 wounds to things with toughness 11 or lower. Otherwise, for other units that can help out the Redemptor Dreadnought, perhaps the most obvious one is the Tech Marine, 65 points for a plus 1 to hit and repairing D3 wounds per turn. I think he's a reasonable enough HQ to use if you happen to have multiple vehicles in the army, though I'd perhaps say that the buffs aren't so outstandingly good that he's absolutely essential. Otherwise, as ever, the Space Marines have lots and lots of options for making firepower stronger, and Cursors for a plus one to hit, Storm Speeder Hail Strikes for an extra AP, or the other Storm Speeders for useful focus fire buffs, both ignoring cover and bonuses against monsters and vehicles are nice. The standard Land Speeder can actually get some pretty good damage boosts going for the Macroplasma Incinerator, as that's a decent blast weapon, though GW have announced that the Land Speeders are being retired at least some point in the future. And I guess theoretically you could use that combi weapon lieutenant to mark some units for reroll ones to wound if they happen to be on an objective. I'd say most of these are fine enough to help focus fire if you happen to have them in your army. I feel like several of them are just a little bit borderline as opposed to just taking more efficient guns though. Running through a few of the options for specific chapters, after the core codex the Iron Hands could have Iron Father Phyros basically being a tech marine but better and healing 3 wounds. He would want to be in his own squad bow to give them his 5 plus fill no pain, maybe moving up in a combined arms force alongside the Dreadnought. For Ultramarines, Gilliman's double oath of moment was usually quite strong for most space marine shooting, definitely handy enough alongside a bunch of Redemptors spitting out general purpose fire. I have seen Black Templars use Redemptor Dreadnoughts really quite a lot in lists. The 6 plus feel no pain works very nicely with their minus 1 damage and just makes them very durable even if they do fail saves. They do have a couple of other options to help them out in combat as well, such as that one to stop enemies from falling back. That one does seem like a bit of a win all round for the Redemptor if you pin something in combat that doesn't want to be there. It can still fire out of combat and then continue to punch them with its fist. For the Dark Angels, the Dark Shroud could grant stealth I suppose, and they've also got a return fire stratagem which could be useful enough on a Redemptor, though I feel like other shooting stratagems might be in competition with other good Space Marine fire support, maybe things like Hell Blasters. Space Wolves and Blood Angels can both help out with melee things, the Blood Angels one fights slightly harder, and could wound things like Knights on a 3+, which I guess is nice enough, plus Red Rampage with Lance and Lethal hits seems alright, but you might have better targets once more. Space Wolves, the Sargas could be okay if they're activated, and they do have another melee damage stratagem as well. And finally, Death Watch along with Black Templars and the standard Space Marines is perhaps one of the more interesting ones for the Redemptors. They get three different turns of shooting boosts, either lethal hits, sustained hits, or precision, plus some double oath of moments with the term of Exoclades on the go as well. Similarly useful to Gilliman. I feel like for the mainline damage dealers in Death Watch, they might be a bit in competition with things like the standard kill teams, I feel like a lot of the time they're going to be more likely to be the targets for stratagems and can pack a lot of medium strength general purpose firepower as well 
with things like Terminators with Cyclone Missile Launchers. Overall, I think it's usable enough in most of the chapters, perhaps a little bit more standout for armies like Black Templars and the standard Space Marines. Death Watch looked like it would help out a bit, but might have a little bit more competition. Talking of competitors, I feel like the Redemptor Dreadnought's going to get weighed up both against other Dreadnoughts and Walkers for the Space Marines, plus just the rest of the mainline damage dealers, things like Repulsors, Executioners or Gladiator Lancers. For the Walker competitors, I feel like the Redemptor is probably better overall than the Brutalis. It's got some serious threat at range, whereas the Brutalis is a bit limited with its closer range multi-melters. It does fight harder, but I'm not sure it's quite enough to make up for the shortfall, though perhaps it's the minus one damage that really sets the Redemptor head and shoulders above it, I think. Otherwise, I think it just has better all-round numbers than the regular Dreadnought or the Contemptor. The Invicta Tactical Warsuit perhaps has the argument of having scouts, and does punch similarly hard in melee. They are way, way easier to kill though with mid-strength firepower, which doesn't help them. I feel like out of the Dreadnoughts, the Redemptor Dreadnought does come out really quite nicely. I would rate it to the top Space Marine mainline Dreadnought at the moment. Those are things like Repulsors, Repulsor Executioners, or Gladiator Lancers. I think it really just depends on what you really want in a Space Marine force. As we saw, the durability is at least somewhat similar, and the Redemptor is a lot better against medium strength firepower with damage too. The tanks generally tend to outshoot the Dreadnought a little bit, but of course it has some fairly serious melee threat of its own as well. And I think that there's some good arguments that you can make for both of them, depending on what you want in the army. In-game, the Redemptors are really quite valuable. Ideally, they want to be hidden as far as possible, if the opponent has got some big scary anti-tank that could seriously threaten them. And they are quite nice battle line units for the Space Marines at the moment, both able to give and take a punch, particularly with Oath of Moments, they can deal some serious damage. They'll be able to laugh off most medium strength firepower, but struggle against the highest quality anti-tank weapons, maybe a little bit more so than other vehicles there. And I think in general the game plan for them will be to move up the board while keeping something partially screened by a ruin each turn, even if they just can nose part of their base or the tip of the Redemptor Fist behind a ruin. Getting the cover save on the 2 plus armour will be a serious boost to durability against quite a lot of guns. I generally aim to divide firepower between the most efficient target for the guns, try and whistle down hordes while the Macroplasma goes for elites or vehicles, and then they've always got the potential to threaten a charge, hopefully picking up another couple of elite infantry to finish off a squad there. And if you need to take down something that's bigger than it can really handle in combat, then Tank Shock is an option for 1 CP. As for weaknesses of the Dreadnought, it is a bit of a generalist as opposed to a specialist. It's not the worst thing when you don't know what you're going to be fighting, but usually it does need a few turns worth of damage output to really justify itself. It's unlikely to ever make its points back in any single one turn of mass damage. Otherwise, as mentioned, while its durability is great against some things, it doesn't really want to be being hit by Melter or loads of mortal wounds, and I feel like that might be more the case more so than other things in your army. Overall though, I would rate the Redemptor as really quite strong for Space Marines at the moment. They are cropping up really quite a lot in competitive lists. Seems like now's really not the worst time to be running a Primaris Frontline Dreadnought. Let me know what you make of the Redemptor though, down in the comments below. Look forward to hearing your thoughts on the vehicle, and how have they been performing for you in game so far. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, and I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel and you'd like to help support, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.